Bardzo proszę rodziców o nieprzeprowadzanie na ten program dzieci, ponieważ nigdy nie będą już mogły spać spokojnie. And if you want to harm your children, bring them. Jeśli zaś chcecie Państwo uczynić swoim dzieciom szkodę, przy, przyprowadźcie. Because there will be free things to give away. Bo na pokazie będą rozdawane różne rzeczy. Oh, there's something wrong here! Or my name is Jose Santos de Guatemala! And it's not. Okay, great. So, hello. hello. <laughs> um, first, I have a question about uh, about your today's show. See. Si. Uh, yes. You, you told about ah. little elephant. <laughs> you, you told us about little elephants, about cheese eating, and yes. what else can we expect today? Ooh, ooh. We talked about fire breathing, small explosions, um, sparkles, um, maybe. A flying thing, but we're still waiting to confirm that this is happening. There may be some also Hollywood effects like rumbles in the seats and uh, mists, dragons. And like I said, the biggest thing is the flying saucer. We're hoping to get a UFO. Are there UFOs in Poland? Uh, Unidentified what? flying objects? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no? These things may be there. Okay, And something. I may show up, but I, I still haven't confirmed with myself. Well, look at... Um, okay, I don't know uh, Polish uh, culture. Because I'm a New Yorker and we, you know, we live on an island. We don't care about anything. But uh, if you look at Charlie Chaplin, this is cartoon, this is animation, this is uh, performance art. Um, and, it, and he is my greatest, one among my greatest influences. Uh, even today in schools, um, animators study the way Charlie Chaplin or these performers from a very early period, what they called vaudeville, silent movies, the way that they performed. Because you could see them all their action in silhouette. They designed for to be seen far away. Like way if you're sitting at the back row, you could still see what they did. 
you know, it's amazing. And the things that they happen, the setups, gags are setups. They're not, well, it's funny. You think it's funny. It's funny because it's set up to be funny. Huh? So there it is. I think I answered it. See ya. What else influences in your, uh, in your films we can see? Well, um, another uh, major influence is Tex Avery, who was part of what they call the golden age of Hollywood American cartoons. The late 30s the f and 40s and very early 50s. Absolute bedlam reigned in these studios where cartoon characters survived the most absurd things. I mean, nothing was taboo. And it was funny. There wasn't the concern that if you swallowed a, a, a bomb and exploded in your body, that a kid would actually do this. Today, there's such a narrow interpretation of influences. But then, you could rip your eyes out, eat them, come out of your ears and put them back in and it's not a worry. I mean, you can do this. You can stretch your tongue out, roll it back up and it could beat against your mouth and you'll be fine. You can get run over by a giant truck back and forth and then walk out flat and then you're back to normal. It was magic. You could just experience anything. Okay. And the timing and the music and the color, you know, it's all of this. It's all of this. It's really a, quite a, an experience for the mind. I am concerned, my, my films tend to have a, 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 a morality running through them. Um, issues of uh, what motivates human behavior, uh, what are the, um, um, the intentions of, of characters. Uh, I often have these underneath the comedy. The comedy acts like a, a layer of camouflage to uh, real questions about uh, why we do what we do, uh, and it, an examination of human behavior and, and their values. So, um, no, I don't want anyone to do anything except laugh. I just want them to laugh. I'll tell you a funny, funny story. When I was at a festival in Bilbao, which is in northern Spain, have you been? No. Ah, one day. <laughs> Very lovely, really lovely old theater and um, Baroque theater. And then there was, um, it was on tour when I was on tour with the Dirty Birdie for the first time back in early mid 90s huh and I couldn't at that time I couldn't sit and watch my own films I would have to leave the theater because I was just you know everything was happening and I sweating and I looked a mess huh so I was sitting outside the doors of the theater and I heard the Dirty Birdie playing and all the laughter just the laughter and the laughter and the laughter. Then the doors came open and people are leaving and they're still laughing. And I thought, what a way to live, huh? To be able to give this huh, to the people. Yeah. To people, just to people. Just for two minutes, four minutes, five minutes, just so they laugh. Huh? And that was, that was satisfying. And it still is. Yeah, I'm sure but life gets complicated. Life gets complicated, you know. And so my program today will be will have examples of how networks have tried to change or limit what I could do in my cartoons and that I would react in my, could, my cartoons against that. There's one particular cartoon, very short, that uh, I, I made. Um, networks give uh, all creators a list of things that cannot do or show in a cartoon. But I do them, and then I get out. You know, they let me go. No cartoon for Johnny. Bad, naughty Johnny. Okay, so I, I hope, well, I'm sure today will be, I will have a great fun. I and so for sure, too. so this, so thank you very much. Where's my 50? <laughs> I told you after. Super session. <laughs>